today I want to talk about the jobless claims numbers for the past week. And I have an article that I'm going to go over with you today, which I will put down in the description below. But I just find it very interesting that the government and the news are choosing this time to release this information because the statistics have been bad for maybe a year or more, the true statistics, but that's not the narrative that they want to paint. That's not the story that the government's trying to tell. So we're gonna go over this article and it's definitely heartbreaking information and it's definitely quite unfortunate, but to just think that the events of the past week or so are the only things affecting the job market, are the only reasons why the average American is struggling for work is quite misleading and I will give my opinions on this as we go over this article. So our first article is from APNews.com and the headline is, U.S. jobless claims hit 258,000, the most in a year. So like I said, this article will be listed down in the description below so you can read the full thing for yourself. I'm just gonna go over the highlights and how it pertains to our discussion for today. So let's dive in. The article begins by saying, the number of Americans filing for unemployment benefits last week jumped to its highest level in a year, which analysts are saying is more likely a result of Hurricane Helene and the Boeing machinist strike than a broader softening in the labor market. The Labor Department reported Thursday that applications for jobless claims jumped up by 33,000 to 258,000 for the week of October 3rd. That's the most since August 5th, 2023, and well above the 229,000 analysts were expecting. Analyst highlights big jumps in jobless benefit applications last week across states that were mostly affected by Hurricane Helene, including Florida, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Tennessee. Claims will likely continue to be elevated in states affected by Helene and Hurricane Milton, as well as the Boeing strike, until it is resolved. We think, though, that the Fed will view these impacts as temporary and still expect it to lower rates by 25 basis points at the November meeting. As someone born and raised in Florida, hurricanes are a major deal and a big impact on my life for sure. And especially when it came to Hurricane Milton, I had many family and friends in basically the direct path of the hurricane. I saw one of the restaurants I went to not too long ago in Anna Maria Island at the end of a pier, just completely destroyed, like in, in the water, completely gone. And also the baseball stadium of the local Tampa baseball team had its roof almost completely ripped off. I know for sure that there's definitely been a lot of damages and a lot of pain involved with the hurricane. And I obviously will admit that uh, because of many businesses being permanently damaged, or just unsafe to be in based off of flooding, water damage, impacts and destructions to the roof and to the structure of the building itself, is definitely a reason why jobless claims have gone up in Florida. But it's not like things were booming and doing incredibly well before this. A lot of Floridians have struggled to find work over the past year or so, and it's not due solely because of hurricanes. I mean, this job market is really rough and it might not be SoCal or New York City prices, but Florida is a pretty expensive place to live. And then on top of that, if you are a homeowner, you have all kinds of insurances that you have to pay that may or may not even exist in the future, may not even be able to you know, cash in and get the, the money that you deserve from paying your premiums, but that's another story for another day. But when it comes to jobless claims and unemployment rates, official statistics find themselves becoming prisoners of the moment. And yes, there was a natural disaster and it was horrible, but when we talk about people not having jobs, I mean, this has been an issue in this economy over the past couple of years. And if we're only gonna look at pure jobless claims, I mean, that's very misleading because 
you're not going to be recently filing a jobless claim if you've been out of work for 18 months to two years. You're not gonna be filing a jobless claim if you've already exhausted your unemployment benefits, if you've had a severance package and maybe you're not applicable or maybe there's some kind of reason or barrier why you're not applying for unemployment right now. So there's all these different factors that don't lead you to being counted as one of the people who are unemployed right now when it really should be. So the only official government numbers that they want to report are on new jobless claims, which is very short term and very temporary, and it doesn't paint the whole picture of what's going on in the job market. The article goes on to say that Washington State was the most impacted by the Boeing strike and accounted for a disproportionate share of the increase. Applications for jobless benefits are widely considered representative of U.S. layoffs in a given week. However, they can be volatile and prone to revision. The four-week average of claims, which evens out some of that weekly volatility, rose by 6,750 to 231,000. The total number of Americans collecting jobless benefits rose by 42,000 to about 1.86 million for the week of September 28th, the most since late July. And we talk about layoffs all the time here on this channel, but the reality is that layoffs don't just happen all at once, certainly not in the same week. There are some laws and regulations in place that, such as the WARN Act, which says that for different reasons, companies have to announce massive layoffs. So you might know because of a public release that your company is gonna be going through layoffs. I mean, you don't know the roles or the departments or anything like that, but those could also be a couple of months out. So there's definitely, we have heard a lot about layoffs happening in the next six to 12 months, but those haven't come to fruition yet, even though they've been publicly announced. And then when it comes to jobless claims and collecting jobless benefits, it says that those benefits rose by 42,000 to about 1.86 million for the week of September 28th. So I already gave my little speech or rant about how these jobless claim numbers don't account for everybody. But then AP News is saying that there's already 1.86 million people collecting unemployment benefits. So if that number is not right and is not painting an accurate picture, I mean, what is a real number? I mean, certainly over 2 million, right? Who knows how many people are actually unemployed? And really the real question is how many people are underemployed? working multiple gig jobs, side hustles, or who had to take a pay cut or go to part-time where they don't even have benefits or healthcare or anything else like they used to have at their previous full-time job. The article continues with, outside of the weather and labor strife, some recent labor market data has suggested that higher interest rates may finally be taking a toll on the labor market. In response to a weakening employment data and receding consumer prices, the Federal Reserve last month cut its benchmark interest rate by half of a percentage point as a central bank shifts its focus from taming inflation toward supporting the job market. The Fed's goal is to achieve a rare soft landing whereby it brings down inflation without causing a recession. It was the Fed's first rate cut in four years after a series of rate hikes in 2022 and 2023 pushed the federal funds rate to a two-decade high of 5.3%. Inflation has retreated steadily, approaching the Fed's 2% target and leading Chair Jerome Powell to declare recently that it was largely under control. In a separate report Thursday, the government reported that U.S. inflation reached its lowest point since February 2021. So there's a lot to be said about interest rates. And it really depends on where you are and where you stand in the whole situation of the job market right now. And just as an American, if you are someone who has been good with your money, you still have a good paying job and you have the opportunity to put your money into a high yield savings account. I mean, when interest rates were much higher, I mean, that was a beautiful thing. And you would be of the opinion that the interest rate shouldn't go down and that you shouldn't be penalized for being in a good place in life and being able to actually put away money. You might be at the viewpoint that, hey, I've sacrificed, I've worked hard, 
and now I want to really make my money work for me, so why are you taking down interest rates? If you are someone who is a business owner, you obviously wouldn't want higher interest rates because that's going to affect the amount of money that you can borrow because the higher the interest rates, the higher your payment would be to return that money that you need from your loan to take your business to the next level, maybe hire people, I don't know about that, but at least buy equipment, spend money on marketing and merchandising and things of that nature. If you're an average American consumer, you might not really care about the interest rates at all. You might be at the viewpoint that prices are not high because only at least because of interest rates. You might be of the opinion that prices are high because of corporate greed, because it's not like companies are not making record profits because they are, but they're not using their record profits to take their business to the next level, hire a bunch of new people, and use all kinds of growth strategies. No, they're using that record profit to, well, I mean, I guess that's a good question. It seems like just to make their shareholders happy, which makes sense, you know, they are the co-owners of the business, and also to make CEOs as rich as possible. Because if you can't take a private jet to work every day, are you really doing it right? The article goes on to say that during the first four months of 2024, applications for jobless benefits averaged just 213,000 a week before rising in May. They hit 250,000 in late July, supporting the notion that high interest rates were finally cooling a red hot US job market. <laughs> what? <laughs> How could you possibly have the notion that in July of this year we had a red hot job market? I mean, these dang statistics, right? I mean, these companies and the government and the administration are getting credit for creating jobs that really don't exist. I mean, where is an actual hiring report? Any idiot can go and create a job posting and submit it to Indeed or LinkedIn. That doesn't mean that they're actually hiring. You can even go through the motions, have a couple interviews. I mean, I can't tell you how many emails I've received that, oh, we're going in a different direction, this job opening has been closed. I mean, these jobs are not real. These companies are not really hiring, and I'm just so sick of hearing that we had a red hot economy, that there's been so many jobs at it. I mean, what in the actual heck is going on? Because companies are not hiring at all. I mean, they're getting brownie points, and even worse, tons of money and tax incentives for quote unquote hiring people when all they're doing is posting jobs that are never going to result in people getting hired. In August, the Labor Department reported that the U.S. economy added 818,000 fewer jobs from April 2023 through March this year than was originally reported. The revised total was also considered evidence that the job market has been slowing steadily, compelling this Fed to start cutting interest rates. Yeah, and that's another thing. How do you, how does it take a, <laughs> a year to determine? Because if you're looking at any job markets, you would say that a active hosting that is supposed to be counted, do, that you post a job, and it should only be counted towards the job numbers if you have the intention of hiring the person in three months time. So how could it take a whole year to finally revise the numbers down? And the fact that LinkedIn and Indeed and ZipRecruiter and all these other kind of companies are doing absolutely nothing to verify and vet that at least a percentage of these jobs posted are leading to hiring is just <laughs> really unacceptable. But all, all they care about, like every other company, is just making money and there's no rules or regulations to stop them. So they can report false job numbers and they can give you a false sense of hope. I mean, people are wasting days and months and sometimes even over a year of their life applying to jobs that don't exist. And that should not be allowed. And just dropping and lowering the interest rates aren't going to force companies to post real actual jobs. And it's not going to lead to these companies changing their hiring process at all. So unfortunately, one thing does not lead to the other. And then the article goes on to talk about, despite some signs of labor market slowing, America's employers added a surprisingly strong 254,000 jobs in September. Yeah. I'd like to see someone in the mainstream media actually go out and try to interview these 254,000 people that are hired and uh, talk about the great new jobs that they have. Or, okay, it might not happen right away. Do it in October. Do it in November. 
Heck, even if you do it in December, there ain't going to be 254,000 people who got brand new jobs from the postings of September. So I'm not going to hold my breath on that. Last month's gain was far more than economists had expected, and it was up sharply from 159,000 jobs that were added in August. After rising for most of 2024, the unemployment rate dropped for a second straight month from 4.2% in August to 4.1% in September. And analysts and economists having their expectations and then comparing it to the official numbers is like betting on a sport that doesn't actually exist. I mean, you can expect whatever you want to. It doesn't really matter because the numbers that we're going to read don't actually exist. I mean, every day I look at jobs news and jobs reports and try to find example of at least one major company that is actually hiring people and not just for temporary seasonal work like Amazon and Target, but like actual jobs actually growing. And I can't find it. I can find companies that buy the companies, merge with that company, and they start eliminating redundant positions. I can find positions, I can find organizations that are investing in AI technology. I can find companies that are spending money and resources in hiring as many people in India and in Mexico, but I can't find any company that is growing and hiring a bunch of Americans and putting Americans back to work in good quality jobs. And if you know of any, please let me know because I'd love to dive into it more and do a full video on this amazing company that is actually hiring full-time people, giving them benefits, and actually giving them a respectable salary. So jobless claims over the past week hit 258,000, which is the most in over a year. Unfortunately, the real statistics are that things are much worse than that. Talk to you later.